back in stunning Kiev, Ukraine for round two of the 2013 F1H2O UIM World Championship. Kiev is a true gem, a city that's been around more than a thousand years, dotted with majestic buildings, eclectic architecture, and magnificent churches that stand as a testament to the richness of Kiev's Orthodox Christian history and heritage. It's also a city with a young vibe, with chic cafes, bars, shops, and restaurants. Kiev has become one of the most prized fixtures on the F1H2O calendar. The race weekend includes F4 races and the President Cup match race, in which boats are pitted against each other in thrilling elimination rounds. Crowds turned out in their tens of thousands, and even the governor of Kiev province, Anatoly Przezhnyuk, got a taste of being in an F1 machine. An F1 boat is like no other. A lightweight catamaran hull. It takes precision driving to keep the boat flying over the surface of the water. An F1 boat corners like it's on rails, producing up to a whopping 5.5 Gs. It's got a two-stroke 2.5 liter 425 horsepower state-of-the-art engine that can catapult a driver to 160 kilometers an hour in just four seconds. The pilots have to cram and squeeze into a tiny cockpit. No air conditioning, no ventilation. They have to negotiate tight technical circuits, looking out through a tiny windshield which is mostly useless as it's sprayed over constantly in the other boat's wash for nearly 40 laps, going round and round like a washing machine. Why? Adrenaline speed. The power of the engine is like wow, you're just flying all the time and you just dip deep in the corner and in uh, the straight you just fly. So it's a wonderful feeling. And the G-Force, huge. Right. And for sure the best feeling is when uh, we have condition of raw water that is the boat that is driving you and not you that is driving the boat. Speed, G-forces and uh, crashes. <laughs> <laughs> the feeling when you hit the gas pedal, no matter how long you've done this for me, 20 years, when you get in the boat for the first time in the weekend and you hit the throttle, it's uh, feeling like no other. There's no machine in the world that goes that fast and turns that hard. So, Completely crazy. It's uh, The boat fly and uh, with the rough in the turn it's very, very di difficult, but uh, we like it. There are 17 drivers from eight teams competing in the Grand Prix of Ukraine, including two new drivers, Bartek Marsalek in Singa Racing Team and Thomas Walston in Team Azerbaijan. One of the big favorites here is Sami Celio. He won this race last year and he ran a long, tough race in the season opener in Brazil, taking first place. He is riding a high and has been a world champion twice, but the <laughs> oh! 
title has eluded him for the past two years. Those two years belong to the two-time defending world champion, Alex Corella of Team Qatar. With his quiet determination and precision driving, he is definitely the force to be reckoned with. But Celio and Carilla's biggest threat isn't the racer with the most wins, Francesco Cantando, nor is it the three-time world runner-up, Tani Alcamzi, or even last year's world runner-up, veteran Philip Schiap. It's a guy who's yet to win a race and has only one podium to his name, Sean Torrente. He's a teammate to Corella, but a rival to Celio. Torrente and Celio have a history of rivalry that culminated in a spectacular collision at the Chinese Grand Prix in 2012, which left both drivers out of the race and led to Torrente's suspension from racing. Last year on this very course, he led the race until a restart with just three laps to the checkered flag, only to be left in everyone's wake with a breakdown. Well, definitely handed him a victory. I passed him clean, led the whole race, and then, you know, had that issue. But Sammy, Sammy, you know, he's a good racer. He's a world champion. He deserves to be respected. There's no doubt about that. However, as far as a person, that's a different story. The only thing he does better than racing is whine, so let him whine, I'll continue to drive my boat, and then we'll see what happens. With his suspension lifted, Torrente was as tenacious as ever in the 2013 season opener in Brasilia, pushing to the limit, doing everything he could to get his first Grand Prix win. But Celio used his pole advantage well, staying ahead of the pack. Torrente got his first podium, runner-up, ahead of teammate Corella. If Torrente can rein in his ferocity and keep the boat running, he's a big threat. Thinking big picture, we, we want to win the championship. Yes, we want to win the race, but we want to win the championship. And that's what I'm told every time I get in the boat now. So, like I said, that's the goal. Alex has two in a row. Qatar team needs to make it three in a row, and I'd love to be the third one in a row. I like to be here, and I really like the place and the race course here. And of course, I always finish here in the podium, so I hope to keep it like that and uh, fight for the win here as well. The Ukraine Grand Prix circuit on Lake Vishkorod is a tight, short and challenging one with two right-handers, four sharp left-hand turns and waves reverberating off the surrounding walls, making this one of the most challenging courses on the tour. Qualifying is divided into three rounds to determine the starting lineup. In Q1, boats have 20 minutes to qualify with six boats to be eliminated. The 11 remaining boats advance to Q2 where another five are eliminated, setting the stage for the Q3 shootout where the remaining six boats get two laps each and the course all to themselves as they battle it out for the all important pole position. Conditions were rough with choppy waters and high winds for qualifying, making it even more challenging for drivers. Maritz Stromoy of Team Nautica and Bartek Marsalek fought it out for the final place in Q2. The Polish driver missing the cutoff by less than three tenths of a second. Celio was fastest in Q1, ahead of Torrente. The other drivers who didn't make it, Ziong, Roms, Walston, Lagianella and Osculati. Accomplished drivers Francesco Cantando and Ahmed Alhamali were uncharacteristically off the pace. Stromoy also struggling with the conditions. The fight for the cutoff took place between teammates Yusuf Al Rabayan and Duarte Benevente of F1 GC Atlantic team, and also Jonas Anderson of Team Azerbaijan, with Al Rabayan coming out trumps. This time, Torrente was faster than Celio, with Schiap impressive in third. Q3, six boats remain. First out was Kuwaiti Yusuf Al Rabayan, who's been improving with every season. He was trumped by Corella, who posted the fastest time of the weekend so far, but with still four drivers to go, he seemed unsatisfied with his lap time. Then came... <laughs> Tani 
Al Kamzi. But he was unable to beat Corella. Chiap, in his new more boat, was tearing around the course, storming into first place with a blistering time of 46.39 seconds. Celio goes out next, all eyes on the defending Ukraine Grand Prix champion. He holds a perfect line through the curves, pushing the boat to the limit, barely even touching the water. Shiap looks on nervously. Not so bad, but uh, I made two mistakes in the... 45, 50. So number one, number two. Celio has it with a time of 45.52 seconds. The last man was Torrente. Can he knock out the fin? Come on. He gives it his all, but in the end, he has to settle for third place, unable to beat Chiap or Celio. Celio once again takes pole position. Carella starts in fourth position, followed by Alcamzi in fifth. Impressive finish for Al Rubayan in sixth. Al Hamili starts at a lowly tenth. President Cup match race is always a crowd favorite. Drivers go head to head in a best of three showdown on an alternating long short circuit that is raced right in front of the grandstands. The big surprise in round one, Moritz Stromoy eliminating Sean Torrente in a photo finish. After some thrilling matchups, the field was reduced to four boats, with Celio taking on Anderson and Alcamzi versus Cantando in the semis. Celio and Alcamzi made it to the final in style. In the third place shootout, Anderson got the better of Cantando, who encountered mechanical problems. In the final, it was a thrilling battle between Celio and Alcamzi, Celio defeating his Abu Dhabi rival in two straight races. So, Sammy Celio is the 2013 President Cup match race champion. Al Kamzi, runner up, Anderson third. With final preparations complete, the third Grand Prix of Ukraine was about to get underway, pitting 17 drivers from eight teams. Conditions were calm, waters were smooth, a perfect day for racing. Uh, I don't know, it's not the same uh, condition and uh, the radar is flat now, but in the rough, uh, not bad for me. And uh, it's the first race for my boat, it's a new moor and uh, it's incredible, very different to my old boat and uh, I'm happy for the first time. Uh, sixth position is not bad to start. I hope to finish from top five, which is good for me in first season uh, to be in the top five. The starting lineup, Celio in pole, followed by Schiap and Torrente, Corella fourth, Anderson seven, Cantando nine, Alhamali ten, youngsters Jong and Roms 13 and 14, Newcomer Walston is in 15th. The boats complete their parade lap before the thousands who gather to watch what has become one of the most exciting fixtures on the F1 H2O Tour as teams and drivers nervously await the final few seconds until the green flag goes down. There's the 30 second warning. The race is on. Celio leads the pack to the commitment boy. Sean Torrente and Philip Schiap going neck and neck in front of Alex Carella as boats roar down the starting straight. Great start from Al Rubayan as he nudges ahead of Al Kamzi, who's passed by Carella on his port side. No surprises there as Celio is first to the turn, followed by Schiap, Torrente, and Carella, with Al Kamzi back far enough to cut in close to the turn. Francesco Cantando chases Anderson on his left. Torrente will be gunning for another 
another podium here as he gives chase to Celio and Shiap. Out comes he in fifth, tries to keep up with Corella as the capacity Ukrainian crowd watches on. Young Philip Roms of Mad Croc Team overtakes Ronaldo Oscolati and also Liu Zhong of China CTIC Team. Celio leads the race, the double world champion holding off a spirited Shiap who's yet to win a Grand Prix with Torrente, Alcamsi and Corella completing the top five. Coming around boy two, Marsalek has a close shave with Stromoy. Anderson keeps a very tight line going into that turn, trying to cut the gap to move up closer to the top five, but Cantando and Al Rubayan beat him to it. Al Rubayan trying to capitalize on his top six qualifying position as the Kuwaiti from F1 GC Atlantic team, but Anderson overtakes him on his port side, dropping the Kuwaiti back down a spot. The battle between Celio and Shiap heats up. The determined Frenchman refusing to let the gap grow as Celio continues his usual all or nothing racing style. At the end of lap one, it's Celio, then Shiap, followed by Torrente, Alcamzi, Corella, Cantando, Anderson, and Al Rubayan. Cantando, who's won more races than any other racer here, is going all out in his blaze boat, keeping the pressure on defending world champion Corella. Ahmed Al Hamili trailing in ninth position, still getting his bearings after missing most of last year due to illness. He gives chase to Al Rubayan. In fourth place, Al Kamzi, followed by Corella, then Cantando sixth, Anderson seventh, and Al Rubayan in eighth. In third position, Sean Torrente, back racing after suspension, coming off his first podium in Brazil, looking for another. Celio is lapping back marker and teammate Philip Roms on the inside. This is a short circuit, and success will depend on how well the lead drivers can weave their way through the field of lapped boats. Celio keeps up his blistering pace, coming up on Valerio Lagianella of Singa Racing Team. Lap 7, Philip Schiap is racing hard, and he has had no problems adapting to his brand new, more designed and built boats. Sean Torrente is pushing on Shiap, but the experienced Frenchman holds off the Torrente onslaught for now as their duel goes into yet another lap. Torrente's teammate and world champion Alex Corella fighting to move up the field so he can at least have a shot at the podium here. Corella has to look out behind him though as he has two top drivers breathing down his neck, Cantando and Anderson. In second place, Shiap now following Celio through the field of backmarkers as he continues to look for his chance to pounce on the fin. Number 18, Marsalek is unlucky, out of the race due to mechanical trouble. Here's a replay of the start. Celio uses his pole advantage well, while Shiap and Torrente go neck and neck in the drag race to the first turn boy. Corella and Al Rubayan leave Al Kamzi in their wake. Celio first to the turn, Shia beats Torrente there. Al Kamzi comes in tight to try and pip Corella on the inside and move into fourth. But the Team Abu Dhabi driver is passed by Corella, who takes fourth spot early on. Back to the race, positions are the same. And Celio seems to be slowing down. He has an electrical problem, giving the lead to Shiap, as Torrente also overtakes his Finnish arch rival to move into second position, pushing the Finn down to third. Shiap now leads. Mad Croc team does not look happy. Celio has slowed down by about 100 kilometers an hour, but he's still racing with enough of a lead to perhaps take him through to at least get some points on the board. With Celio bumped down, it's a two-horse race between Schiap and Torrente. Both drivers now so close to winning their first Grand Prix race. Torrente is pushing so hard, Schiap is going so fast to stave him off that the two now start lapping some of the stragglers for a second time. The 
tough part from here is being able to navigate the heavy traffic on the circuit. Something Xia is so far doing exceptionally well with just 16 laps left in the race. That will show you how short this circuit is as a sixth place boat gets lapped by Shiap, who is flawless. Huge battle for fourth spot as Corella takes on Alkamzi. The two round boy number five with Alkamzi keeping his lead. Then through the right hander on boy number six as Corella closes the gap. With his inside advantage and superior speed, Corella finally passes Alkamzi on boy one as the world champ now sets his sights on Celio in third. Torrente still in second, giving chase to Shiap as he too laps Cantando, giving his all to try and reduce the gap with a Frenchman up ahead. With 25 of 38 laps completed, Shiap is in complete control, loving his new boat as he laps Osculati of Team Nautica and Benevente of F1GC Atlantic yet again. As Corella closes in on Celio for third spot, Shiap is coming up on them from behind. You don't see the likes of Corella and Celio getting lapped often. Corella pushing Celio all the way, trying to make his move on the fin. With 10 laps left, Shiap now moving in to lap Celio and Corella, who are locked in their own battle and can do nothing other than ignore the Frenchman as he zooms past, now way beyond their reach. China CTIC team manager Eric Chan stoically looks on as Shiap looks insurmountable out there. There we see Shiap overtake Celio, but the Finn should be more concerned with Alex Corella coming up behind him in fourth spot. Now Torrente tries to lap Celio too, but Celio is not making it easy for him. There's a history of bad blood between these two drivers, and it seems to show out there as Celio is suddenly spurred on by his dislike for Torrente. Experienced Swede Jonas Anderson in seventh position trying to pass Alcomzi to move up a spot into sixth. Torrente still trying to lap Celio, but Celio holds him off. Torrente gives up on it and lets his teammate Corella through so he can do battle with the Finn and put some points on the board for Team Qatar. Good teamwork there from Corella and Torrente. Now the chase is on as Corella tries to take that podium place from Celio's grasp in the final lap of the race, lap 37. Corella is giving his all to overtake Celio, but time's running out. Can he do it? Can he take that podium spot? A lap ahead, Shiap wins his first ever Grand Prix. Corella and Celio battling for third place. Corella and Celio now head to head. Corella has it. He's overtaken Celio with just a few hundred meters left. What a performance and his teammate Torrente, runner-up. Celebrations from China's CTIC team. Well-deserved victory for them. And another great result for Torrente. The final results, Xiap, Torrente, Corella, Celio, Cantando fifth, then Anderson and Alcamzi, and a good eighth place finish from Al Rubayan. The man of the day, Philip Xiap, congratulating his crew who've done a superb job here. That puts Torrente on top of the world standings, just a point ahead of Celio, with Shiap moving up to third, Corella fourth, Alcamzi fifth. And what a performance from the new Moorhall, winning on its maiden race. I'm very happy. First race with a new boat. For my boat builder, it's um, incredible. For my mechanic, uh, he works a lot of for uh, this result. Uh, for me, 10 years, uh, more uh, 18 Grand Prix. And um, no, I'm very, very happy for my team, for me, and uh, incredible day. I was right on Philippe the whole time. <laughs> Oh, 
driving a great race. I had a couple opportunities. I was there. We were lapping all the way up to Sammy. And I get to Sammy and he decides, you know what? I'd rather wreck than let you buy because he knows the points lead. Okay? So he almost took me out and I got on the radio and said, I ain't taking a chance. Let Alex go. If Alex passes him, I know we're in the lead either way. And, and I had faith in my teammate. Well, I don't know why. I mean, he's only the two-time world champion. So he went out and he did it. And, um, and that's what it's about, man. It's about being smart. Not, I know I have the talent. I know I can be the fastest guy, but I got to be smart. I can't be crazy. I got to be relaxed or somewhat relaxed. <laughs> okay, it was, uh, was a good race, yes. I, start, I didn't start good. I, start, I turned in fifth position after I, I had to fight until the last boy for Pastani and uh, really at the last lap, uh, Sami for finish on the podium. And uh, I really enjoyed this race. I really enjoyed it so much. At the end of round two, the team standings. Qatar team on top. Mad Croc second, China CTIC team up in third. That brings to a close round two in Kiev. See you in round three when the F1H20 UIM World Championship heads back to Liuzhou, China in October.